So, Richard, we just heard from Nancy Pelosi. We heard from some Republicans there in that clip Dasha played reacting to Trump's return to the Hill. What's your big takeaway? A few things. One, again, he was returning to the scene of the crime, as, as Nancy Pelosi said. Again, the very police that guarded him yesterday, his people beat them to a, sh a pulp, and he calls them hostages and political prisoners. That's one. Um, two, they still are tripping all over themselves on this abortion issue. It, it makes no sense, and they're losing both sides. The hardcore anti-abortion people aren't satisfied with all these exceptions. And you can see in the polls, the people who were the single-issue voters on abortion now outweigh the single-issue who are against by three to one. That's unprecedented, and it, that spread's only getting worse. And I love the quote from one of the House members who said this was like a drunk uncle at a family reunion. Uh, and, and I just think that's kind of what these Republicans in swing districts are saddled with. He said something nice about Larry Hogan, who immediately disavowed Trump's embrace of him. So they're kind of tripping all over themselves. And one final thing, he keeps saying he's ahead in the polls. He's not. If you look at likely voter polls today and over the past week, there are several national polls where Biden had been tied maybe behind a point or two. He's up two, four points over where he was as of the time of those convictions. So things are not trending well for Donald Trump on his 78th birthday. I will say coming out of that meeting, a lot of the messaging was all around unity, mm -hmm. Maura. And we saw, as Dasha pointed out, some of his more boisterous GOP critics in that room, in these meetings, people like Mitt Romney, uh, Bill Cassidy, and of course, Mitch McConnell, who called the meeting entirely positive. Well, Liz Cheney, former Congresswoman, former Republican leader mm -hmm. in the House, reacting with this post. Trump and his collaborators will be defeated, and history will remember the shame of people like Leader McConnell, who enabled them. So is the Republican Party unified behind Trump, or are there cracks in the foundation? There are certainly cracks in the foundation, and we've seen that play out over the last really eight years. If you think back to the fact that when Trump was running, there was so much division there about things that he said and did. And then in 2016, I know as a staffer, it was uh, kind of my waking up to, what do I need to react to today? What do I have to respond to? What did I miss while I was sleeping? You know, it was the every day of getting asked, how are you going to respond to what Trump said today? And, and so I think what you saw yesterday was, we have to try and look ahead to policy wins. If if the Republicans do win, uh, they need to be prepared for what that would be and what their legislative agenda would be. So unified in that sense is a, is a positive. It's what you expect. The Republican Party, as just as the Democratic Party, would want to have a unified plan moving forward. Um, but I do think it's interesting, that whether it's negligence, ignorance, or whatever it is, about what happened on January 6th. I mean, the former president has failed to take responsibility, to acknowledge what happened that day. And those members, on a personal level, have to decide what's their threshold for keeping their job, for working on behalf of their constituents, or for their own integrity of what they're willing to put up with uh, in order to, to get the job well, done. Well, apparently so, for Mitch McConnell, who called Trump practically and morally responsible for January 6th, he's made the choice that he's better falling in line. And I, I think to say it like that, I don't disagree with you, but I, again, what are they supposed to do? Not, it's not as easy as it seems to stand out on the sidelines like Liz Cheney is now in a position to do. I agree with her. But I'm saying as far as these members have to decide is they're in this position. They're representing the 700,000 people in their district. So their best chance of getting something done is working within their conference to navigate. Do they all need to go out there and be cheerleaders for the former president? No, they do not. But they need to get their work done. And for a Congress that has abysmal uh, approval ratings, it's really important that they try and get some sort of policy wins.